name is Angela Daniel and I am the chair of the Base Metals Committee for vetting at the um, NEC Antiques Fair. The, the committee is subdivided because there are so many different kinds of metal and various disciplines under which they fall, such as kitchenalia and gardenalia, which are totally separate from domestic and decorative metalwork. My name is David Molson and I'm Angela's deputy, so I look after pewter in particular. Vetting is very important. It's important mostly, of course, for the customer. It's to instill confidence when they're buying. It's to reassure them that their knowledge, be it none at all or, you know, at a very high level, is underpinned by a group of people who are experts in their own field. Base metals are long-lasting, durable, easy to display and the fact that they last they last and any inscription on a piece of metalware is likely to last a lot longer which can give you clues to its um, antiquity uh, its origin its its country of origin um, I think that uh, you know there are certain things that unfortunately erode with time and base metals are not not one of them well I've brought along a pewter plate here that uh, was actually made about 1720 it's a lovely decorated pewter plate and it's decorated with rigor work, a process called rigor work. This was probably made by a chap called James Hitchman in London, 1720-1730. It's decorated here, I don't know if you can see it, with a lion, a crowned lion, uh, with a human face, possibly depicting George I. This design is created by a process called rigor work. Pewter is a very soft metal, so you can achieve this by just walking a screwdriver-like tool across the surface. You get this lovely naive pattern, which emulates uh, the sort of decoration that was found on Delft wares and uh, slipwares in England at that time. And on base metals. And on base metals. Well, I, I found one or two really lovely collector's items. Um, first of all, this snuff box. And snuff boxes are very, very collectible. They're, they come in all shapes and sizes and they'll form many hundreds of years. So you can collect snuff boxes ranging from £20 to 5000 maybe more. Um, you found something rather interesting about mm, it. That's right. This one has, has got some inscription on it. 1915, William Trafford, his uh, military number 27080 and Chatham. So this guy was presumably a sailor based at Chatham Naval Dockyard. Very tactile piece as well. Yes, they are. The way they're made is just so tactile. You can imagine that in your pocket and it would feel very, very nice. In fact, it's been made to go in That's pocket, right. that curve. Yes. Yeah. Then yeah. I found this rather lovely shoehorn, cast brass, and could be, ooh, could be quite early, certainly mid-19th century. And um, I thought what a nice gift it would make for a man. Men are always very, very difficult to buy for. It's lo rather lovely having the boot as a handle. And then for collectors, this was, this was quite an unusual set of fire irons I found on Terry Kelly's stand. It's, usually you get very small ones, you know, for mm. dolls' houses and things. These are a bit of a mystery because they are Georgian, which is most unusual. Mm. Most of them are Victorian. And this set are truly Georgian and not many people would well there could be many reasons why they were made mm. they could be a tradesman sample yeah. Yeah. Um, they could be merely for decoration but either way they're, they're lovely pieces of metal work and there are many people who would like to collect them mm. so and w when we're vetting them we have to look on the labels um, which we, we've taken off for the purposes of this piece of film but on the labels it would have all the uh, information that we need to know in order to ascertain whether or not the item is fit for sale. There would be a date, country of origin, um, as much description as possible of the, of the object, and then we would check for its fair worthiness, wouldn't mm, we? Mm. And what other things are there? Yeah, check for condition um, and whether there have been any repairs yeah. or over-restored or recoloured, repatinated. Yes. Those sort of things we check for. Um, yes, there's, there's many, many things, mm. and um, each expert puts in his bit mm. of information, his bit, of, his opinion, his or her opinion, and um, <clears throat> we can, you know, decide absolutely as far as we're concerned because it is only a matter of opinion, mm. or we, five opinions in our case. We come to a consensus. Yeah, mm. and then something is either kept on, altered, or taken off, or whatever. Either way, the buyer is protected. I love Antiques for Everyone fairs. I think a lot of people do. Dealers, 
uh, private buyers, um, collectors. It's a day out. Mm. There's many reasons, aren't there? What do That's you think? That's right. Well, people starting to make collections, it's, very, it's a very important uh, fair for them because they know very well that they can come along and they can buy with confidence. So they can come and look at a vast range of goods, probably dating from the 16th century right the way through to about 1950. All sorts of different items from glassware, silver, pictures, base metals, um, on and on. A vast variety of items. And they can look at those and decide what they like. And if they want to start collecting, then there's probably a selection here that they could collect and make a start on that day and buy with confidence. That's the main thing. Mm, absolutely. Mm.